We're thankful to have you back to this our show, ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. This happening to be the 311th episode. And you are a thankful viewer, as you see down there. Thanks, Michael. And this is our 10th time in looking in membering Lahaina, how we can all get together and, uh, and make uh, Lahaina at least what it was, uh, in best case, something even better. And so after you, DeSoto Brown, hi. DeSoto. Hello, everyone. So DeSoto is usually, uh, you know, our uh, Bishop Museum historian, but uh, with us uh, from his Austin Prof designed home uh, on Wednesdays as today. And we have Martin Ancelini back. Hi, Martin. Oh. And Martin is going to share with us how that uh, nice future could, could look like. So this is our... Veterans Day to have had edition, and we want to thank our utmost veteran, Ron Lindgren, our late and mid-century modern master, who has fought for us in Vietnam and also has fought for us in architecture. And just to recap what we said, why he's our hero to that degree as well from last time, we said from your two cultures to Soto, he did not steal any from your Hawaiian culture because he never owned land here. He also did not steal anything uh, from your American culture, your American side, DeSoto, because he kept his fees so tight uh, and humbly uh, too little that he just, you know, owns uh, and now rents a little bit of a shelter. On top of that, he also did not sell out, uh, uh, not um, internally, as uh, some of the firms have unfortunately been doing. I mean, worst case is Takashi Anbi's office were the ones who basically, you know, continued it after his death, just basically used and abused the name for story, very horrible architecture. And uh, you, Ron, you guys also did not sell out externally, as many of the firms, when they want to call it good, basically sell the company to some who want to buy it, who then use the name again to do things often, however, unfortunately, not in the, in the sense of the philosophy of the firm. None of these things you have done. This is why you are our utmost hero and veteran, both as a soldier and as an architect. Uh, one thing, Ron, we talked openly, uh, just so do we with him, is that one thing he wasn't achieving was um, inclusivity. Unfortunately, because Conrad Hilton spotted you guys early, you went for the exclusive, although there is a show in our Courtyard uh, series, DeSoto, where we were showing that uh, Ed Killingsworth had a nice proposal for actually migrant workers that did not go because, again, he got stuck with, you know, the, his fame of being uh, becoming a uh, wonderful, of, of course, tropical exotic hospitality uh, designer all over the world. So that being said, um, unfortunately, again, and, and also, you know, selling, selling out, um, I just uh, re-familiarized myself with what has been my raw model, my hero from my Perry days in Nebraska, I am Pace Bank, which its design partner was James Ingle Fried, who I did more research these days. Maybe this is where there comes the affiliation because he's actually German originally, a Jewish German, and that way had to leave uh, which, which is now coming up, unfortunately, all over the world. Uh, the hate against Jews, that's what my culture, unfortunately, brought to the most extreme Holocaust tragedy back then. And he fled from that and came to America and blessed America with the best. Towards his end, unfortunately, uh, architecturally, I was shocked to, if you Google, and I, we save you from negative pictures here, but you can Google the Ronald Reagan a uh, building slash trade center in Washington, D.C. that he did late in his career. And it's unfortunately what was backing up Trump with his uh, call for um, classicist style for federal buildings. That's what he uh, what was doing there already. So that, that's pretty sad. So even firms like IMP, the great IMP, and even the work they're doing these days is not what I am and what Ingo and Mr. Cop, you know, did. So again, kudos to Ron. But we want that to, uh, you know, okay, what happened to the bank is if you Google the recent, there's a bank moving into the bank building. 
and the firm of Sinclair Hilly in Nebraska was doing something terrible, horrible. I, I save you from having to look at that here on the show. You got to look it up. You got to Google it. So we were even more enthused to tell the owners of our uh, and the operators of our IMK here. And for that reason, please go to the next slide, Michael. Um, and this is basically Katarina and Christopher and Justin and Carlos who own and operate the Hale Manoa here on campus. And we thank you so much that you are not doing that. And you were saying, well, we don't have the funds. And we basically said, luckily, you don't have them. So you won't have, you know, ideas how to spend it, maybe not. So it's it's a good thing. So both in the Halikulani runs, where they intentionally, they have the money, but they don't spend it on giving it the novelty touch. And in Hala Manoa, they don't have the funds. And hopefully now us talking to you guys about it, you also, if you would have the money, wouldn't go. And why is that, Martin? Because what we see here now is what we toured together. And so now you share with us what impressed you and might have even backing up your proposal for Lahaina. Yeah. Yeah. I I uh, just to synthesize what is happening in this in this fantastic building is we are talking about a building that was built in '62, so a 60 years old building uh, that is working with the original details, furniture, uh, uh, amenities. Uh, since then, it's still operating as it was operating 60 years ago. So uh, the first lessons. Lesson is about doing things right, no? The the high quality uh, 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 really implies, uh, uh, of course, probably a down, uh, an initial bigger down payment, probably at least a bigger effort in terms of architecture, not just uh, randomly copy and paste uh, details, but doing doing things right, understanding the site, thinking about details and. Uh, and uh, building properly no? with high quality materials, uh, uh, and this will stand. Of course, uh, the building now we were doing the tour with the persons that are operating still the building, and it is a building that, uh, again, is still alive with the original uh, 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 construction. Then, uh, something which is uh, fantastic is how passive systems work. Passive systems for the non architects is how. Uh, we can save energy basically we can we can generate a better comfort without the necessity of gadgets ac fans even solar panels no uh, the the building works very good uh, you we see there in the images simple elements that probably are familiar to us no how, how this uh, 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 natural ventilation works the location of the building uh, its position towards the trade winds towards the sun makes it very comfortable. So uh, this is the this is very important. And then uh, uh, I would add simpleness. No, uh, uh, complex is not the same as complicated. No? Probably it is actually the opposite. No, so probably doing the things that should be done without uh, the research of a style or a message or or uh, the Fulfillment of 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 the ego. Uh, it is just maybe it would be just enough to do things right, and things will stand longer and uh, will be uh, more uh, appropriated, uh, as we were talking before uh, about should uh, should happen uh, should be hap still happening in, in line. And the third thing, which is probably the most amazing about uh, that building, but also about the whole complex complex of the East West Center, and the East West Center itself is. As an institution, is uh, the, this idea of sharing? No? Is uh, we are uh, in this building. You really feel. I mean, we were in a random day, in a random moment, and you really feel that people is sharing. They they, they share bicycles, they share surfboards, they share food. Uh, the spaces for eating are communal. Uh, even the toilets. Again, we are talking about a 60 years old building where shared between men and women. Uh, and this is amazing, no? And then, if you want to, to have your intimacy, you have the, your dorm, but it is just more more a space to be concentrated. If you want to study by yourself, so there is also study a communal study place, uh, and to sleep and to be uh, alone if you want. This is something that sometimes it is also needed. But the rest of the life happens communally, which is great, no? In the future, uh, we will 
be more and more living in communal way. Uh, the best examples as student housing, as as what is happening around the universities and in the in the East West Center in particular, but also, for example, senior living. You know? The American society is getting uh, older, and in in many cases, senior living is a is a is a way of, of communal living. Massive. And we no? and on on that uh, note, so, we yeah we we have two examples just chipping in that we just showed, and I was the one in charge of one of them at our Dokomomo walking tour by Frank Slavsky, um, who had done two. One we did a show about um, with uh, one of our former uh, emerging uh, talents, uh, David Liang, whose mother lived in the one that's on the end or the beginning of um, Kapiolani Boulevard. Um, sorry, Kalakaua Avenue, that's by Frank Slavsky. And then now there's the one which is close to the H1, just uh, Eva behind Queen Emma Gardens. These are both examples. And by the way, they use the same uh, um, bioclimatic ventilation trick as this building. Can you explain this a little bit more? And this is the picture at the very middle on the, on the very right column. Uh Yes, it is ventilations that devices, uh, 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 an artificial fan. It is a device on which you can just control the the, the opening to let air, great winds uh, come in. Yeah, so that but also the images, this... the other images uh, Keep going. Uh, show how the building is open. You know? So you have cross ventilation all the time. Yeah, and space. when we. And we go back to slide three. This is why we have hopefully continued this photo with Ron, with you, Ron, our automobile architecture comparison, because there's lots to learn from that, as we say. And you yet have to stay, share the story how you were flying with uh, with a young uh, woman in a in a Willys Jeep over there in in Vietnam. And the, the Willys Jeep originally was a simple, rugged, utilitarian uh, vehicle, right? That also made it like that into the civilian realm. Now, as we see, uh, uh, you know, when we drive on Alamoana Boulevard in the show quote at the bottom right, the second from right, now these cars, just like the Mustang we talked before, they get commodified, comfortable, and convenient by not only stretching them. So it used to be a two-seater with some spare extra seats or carrying some stuff in the back. Now it becomes a family car. And they become enclosed, however, with some options that you can open them. But mostly you see people driving around in them and being hermetic. So that's the same everywhere. Things that started out buildings, as Kurt Sandburn, who I'm going to see in a few days, looking forward to in San Francisco, uh, started out as Stecklanized mid-century. And they got mumuized over the times, which we see them in Kaka'ako over and over again. So it's the same thing as starting out simple, affordable, rugged. And all of a sudden, it morphs, capitalism makes it morphs into the opposite, into hermetic and exclusive. And again, the, the Willys Jeep was, was that also, you know, once it was owned by Kaiser, who has a long legacy upon retirement here on our island that we talked about, which the show quote in the top right refers to. And it was a, a cheap car. It had to be cheap, right? Cheap and utilitarian. And if that gets us back to Halamanoa, next slide again, slide four. Because we also put in uh, the affordability. It's 25 bucks per night. If you do the math, uh, this is $750 for our emerging generation. And it's not ours, because shame on me as part as you age and you, Martin, paying for us at you age. We don't do this anymore. Uh, we do the opposite. We built new dorms that are what the 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 stretch you know uh jeep now becomes commodified convenient ties a seed hermetic capitalized and then it's going to be fourteen fifteen hundred dollars for what they ironically call two bedrooms but it's actually one small room almost as small as the ones in halamanoa and you squeeze two beds in there and uh, and the mindset is not what you said. You kind of retract into your private bubble at times. 
and then you expand out into the multitudinal of the communal life. But the communal life is basically, you know, not as fantastic and paradisal. I mean, these these communal open kitchens up there, high in the sky, they're just the best ever. And again, I am I know because I had the privilege to stay in there for the first week when I came here because they hosted me and I, I, I wish I could have stayed. It, it, was, it was just the best. So here is the federal government who runs East West Center uh, providing, you know, paradisal life for young people, uh, you know, for us in Hawaii. And, and we should all do that. We as U8 and we coming back to Lahaina, right? Because that's, why are we talking about all this? Because this is the core problem of Lahaina, right? Is can people afford to go back? And this is a prime example. Yes, as you rightly so said, uh, Martin, for 60 years, they've been able to, they've been able and willing to do it and keep the cost so that people can still afford it. That's what's so amazing. So it's, it's affordable and absolutely paradisal at the same time. You know, we were once hearing Stan Carr when he was building the first, you know, supposedly for local workforce people. He said it doesn't work. You can either have, you know, affordable or easy breezy. And this is, this is the answer, no. That is just an excuse because 60 years ago it was possible and it's still running, up and running that way. So, Actually, um, the, with, the, the cost of the, of the AC and some systems makes it more expensive. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, we're going to do a, one last round next week where we're going to wrap it up. We're going to talk about what you learned from this also for uh, going home, um, you know, at times uh, to Colombia and where you see that, you know, uh, hospitality could be a great opportunity for your culture. We also will next week wrap up and because all of a sudden it is not staying just on, on, on Maui because we all of a sudden have Mililani Mauka. So what happened there? Well, Mililani Mauka is currently has been undergoing a fire for some days now. And because it has not been threatening any uh, habitation or any buildings, it has been allowed to burn. And that's also very difficult to try to fight it in the location that it's in. But the really important part of that fire is that it's in what formerly would not have burned. It's in wetland forests, in upper Mauka mountain areas, which normally would have in the past been so damp, so wet, so green, that there wouldn't have been a long lasting fire. The fact that there is a fire in this area shows, first of all, the lack of rain. And that is not only probably a temporary thing, but that's going to be our continuing climate saga as we continue forward through time. The lack of rain is going to lead to more dryness. It's going to lead to more fuel for fires. And that means fires are going to continue to be a major concern. Well, we saw what happened in Lahaina in August. We saw the destruction of the town through an uncontrolled fire, which got started in dry vegetation. And this is scary because we're going to continue to see more of that, and we have to be planning for that. We talk about planning for other things. We talk about easy breezy living, and those are, yes, very important concerns for our day-to-day -day life. But we also have to be adapting to the changing environment we live in, not only from the increased danger of fires, but also the rise in sea levels too. And that's something we've talked about a lot. So architecture and development and urbanization are all going to have to take these things into account, not just what's comfortable to live in, but what's safe to live in and how can we live in the environment which is continuing to change and not in good ways. For, for that excellent point, if we can get slide six back, because what you're doing, Martin, and for that, Ron is your hero too, because when he was sending us this picture about his house, and we were all, you know, saying yes, but you, the audience, might say, where is the house? I don't see a house. And that's actually the point. This is, this is nature. Uh, you know, architecture becomes nature. So Ron is, is as proud, rightly, about his greenscape in front of his house and, and, and also blurring into his house 
than his house itself. And that way, you know, you keep it, you keep it lubricated, you keep it irrigated. And that way, you know, as every organism needs to do that. And maybe on these notes, uh, Martin, pick up some of the other, um, you know, project uh, illustrations from your project and, and explain us why your proposal is actually a hybrid of nature and architecture. Yeah, maybe if we go to slide 21, uh, what, what, what I would say to complement what, what, uh, what the Soto was saying is that we should uh, keep water. We should, instead of like bearing water directly, make it uh, 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 circulate faster and uh, actually try clean it good and throw it back to the sea. We should keep water in the, in the land. We, we should keep water here as much as possible. Uh, of course, in nature, uh, and also in the built environment, the, the more we are able to to uh, uh, generate uh, reservoirs, uh, artificial and natural wetlands, uh, as ways of of cleaning water, of storing water, which is also a way of storing energy. You know? uh, of course, this should be done in a with a contemporary energy uh, system, with a contemporary engineering, instead of these water dams what, that were built before that were, were cutting all the natural systems. But uh, what I am trying to illustrate in this image is, is it is a little bit abstract, uh, uh, but it's like, why not bringing, if we would be able to bring water into the built environment, which is hard because normally uh, we want to keep water Way because we don't want uh, our backyard to get to get wet and this can bring mosquitoes and and uh, in a heavy rain maybe water will come inside. But if we uh, build good water systems, engineering have have engineering have the, the solutions. We we could have the water there, uh, and this will help us to in in general terms to to to. to be more resilient in many cases, no? Uh, uh, of course, to cultivate, but also in cases of emergency, to have water close to be able to control fires, for example. Yeah, in slide 29, if we can have that back, and we hear your birds, the soda, that's all part of the natural system. So bringing in, you know, nature as, again, you know, it, it's where I'm from and where you spend part of your youth, the soda, and Martin, you've been in Switzerland. It is too cold to let nature in at this time of the year for the next four to five to six months. It is impossible because our human body is not able to withstand what nature does. It shuts down. All this irrigation system gets turned off because otherwise the tree would basically explode, uh, would be dynamited from inside, which is actually imploding. And, and so we, we cannot do that. So we have to hide. But here we should embrace the elements. And again, then we can reduce it to the essential. And essentialism, as we said, with uh, you know the Willie's Jeep, as it is with architecture, that can be really good on so many levels. Um, it's it's just you know it's easier to maintain to be maintained and that also you know transitions into the twenty five dollars of the of the Hala Manoa because there's just like little to you know fix it was done well and that that's the idea we can learn from we obviously in these days have and sort of we've been doing many uh, shows on on the second largest economy on the island uh, which is the military just. Uh, besides the number one, which is hospitality. And there's many facets to that. And if we want to learn from it from a positive, and of, of course, there's like talking, you know, liquidation. We liquidize our, our island, unfortunately, with fossil fuel and put it into the ground for the many war machines we have to fuel, and then it leaks, and then it spills. This is the Red Hill spill, right? And that's, that's the bad side of it. But looking for the good side, you learn from the military as it's, as it's being, you know, through the spot, it's being so, again, utilitarian. And, uh, and why is not architecture doing that? And your architecture is actually doing that. 
It's very utilitarian. Again, we, we do joint venturing with these two Germans, uh, Christian Beck, with the uh, with the Lignolock dowels. The wood is ours. We use local wood. And then we have Carsten Klein. And unfortunately, sorry, Carsten, I called you Christian as well. Combine the two of you into one person. You teach us how to use this material here, which is basalt, uh, and making it into these, making it into basalt rope. So these are the two materials, the genetic code, Martin, of your creations. And they are basically endemic, local, but they use technologies from all over the world to push it to a level where, you know, your ancestors to Soto weren't able to do it because they were just by themselves. But now we're one big world and just look at us. You know, we have a Hawaiian who is also American. And we have a Colombian who has also been in Switzerland, and we have a German who is now also in Hawaii. And so, you know, that's that's the beauty of the best of all worlds that we should embrace. Um, but always, I guess, again, not bring our stuff unreflectedly. And we we have, you know, we have requests here and there of people who want to help, but we gotta, you know, caution them and say you gotta adjust and adapt. You want to do good and you want to bring, but um, you you gotta. I'm pay again is is American Chinese, right? And his first project was almost killing his career. That was the Hancock Tower in Boston, where the curtain wall that we want to transform into the water curtain wall. We're gonna see more of that next next week. Was not quite, you know, developed to the degree it should have been, and glass panels were falling off and and killing a child down there. And talking, you know, East West Center and Kennedy Theater, Jackie Kennedy saved his career because she chose him as a young upcoming amongst all the established to build the memorial for her husband who was cruising through our Waikiki a few months before he got shot in Dallas. So this is all this sort of cosmopolitan uh, realm that that you just sort of got so excited about when you were a kid, a state of kid, because nothing but the best came to you from everywhere. And that's what we wish Lahaina, and that's what we think, Martin, uh, your your proposal is doing. So with that, uh, we're going to wrap this up with uh, where it could go next and as well uh, next week. And until then, please all stay humbly, humane, humanely humble. See you next week. Bye.